Alrighty guys, back into the map and Tomb Valley will be the choice here by Lucifron, who is your orange Terran player in the very far top left corner. And there he is in all his beauty. In the very far bottom right corner guys, it's going to be Aja's very own Scarlet. And she looks out actually, cross position spawns is actually pretty nice here for Zerk. All right. Yeah, 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 it certainly is. Um, this is the version of the map we are using the WCS one, so they can spawn vertically in addition to spawning cross map. So um, there, there was that potential, and I think we did see that actually earlier on in this uh, in this tournament. But for now, we said Lucifer was going to be looking to put on a little bit of pressure. We'll see what he can do here. Yeah, certainly. Uh, looking into his uh, build right now, no indication quite yet. As we get to that 11 point, we'll be able to see if he wants to put a double racks. If he had, he'd start moving it on an SV right now. So looks like it might just be a standard one racks into an expansion. But uh, again, pressure is very easily to pull off on this map. That third is a little bit harder for Zerg to grab because of the rocks between the natural and the third. Uh, so always keep an eye on when the aggression is coming. There's a lot of 2-2 two -two pushes as well that are very strong on this map if you go for Mac. Men. Yes, because if we get towards the super late game once again, or this game stabilizes, of course, the, that's going to be the strength of Scarlet. She's going to be able to shine in that scenario. Good creeps right through the middle of the map, be able to dominate those engagements that happen around there. And uh, we'll see what ends up happening as we move along. But for now, Lucifron with that barracks on the way, is not really deviated from what he started with the first couple of games. I mean, his early game aggression is fantastic. It seemed like in game number two, um, he had a, a really strong push lined up with Stimpak plus one finishing up, uh, that where he could move him across the middle of the map and got some damage in, but he elected to go ahead and expand and get 2-2 two -two on the way, which allowed Scarlet to drone up like crazy and move into her late game. You just got to keep constant aggression on Scarlet, I feel like, to kind of whittle her down. Because uh, if not, if you leave her alone, she will do what she did in game number two. Crease right all over the place, upgrades on the way, drones all over the map. All right, well, Lucifron going for that expansion here in just a second, uh, not putting down a second supply depot for the time being. First SEV scout is on the way to see what his opponent is up to, but of course, Scarlet has not really deviated from the norm so far. Even after losing game number one, she came right back and went for Queen into double gas, quick layer tech, and uh, quick third base at about the six minute mark, and things have looked very consistent so far. I mean, to be honest with you, this build is, I mean, it's a really strong build. I mean, this is one of those maps that, or one of those builds that Tasteless would say, if you're trying to learn Zerg, you play this. Uh, and really, I mean, it allows you to defend a lot of openings pretty nicely, it allows you to get economy up, everything that's Zergy Zerg about it. Uh, so if you ever want to copy one, man, go with Scarlet's build. It's as you've seen, pretty darn nice. Oh yeah, definitely. And it uh, does prepare you against early aggression, although it seems like that's when you can be a little bit weak, as we saw Lucifron exploit that early on. Uh, but for him, same thing. Double gas after his one racks expand, and uh, he had been playing Biomech pretty much the entire day so far. We'll, we'll oh see if he gosh. switches things up here. Lucifron's so smart, man. He's constantly going overlord, and, uh, I guess hunting. Unfortunately, he won't be able to get that one as it will get away just barely by the skin of its teeth. But mm -hmm. if uh, you send that overlord up and you wait a good five to 10 seconds and then send it once again, Lucifron kills that overlord immediately there. But Scarlet had a nice rally point uh, set up immediately there. Uh, Ling's now popping out. We'll cut that SUV. Notice how she's still only going for two Ling. Just wants to grab that map control, drone up, get out all our queens. Uh, just the same thing over and over again because it's a strong play. Yes, it is, and uh, looks like she's saving up her resources. In about 15 seconds, we're going to see double gas once again. And uh, good plays on both sides here. Lucifron knew he'd chase the Overlord off to the side. Scarlet's actually been waiting for a while. I think she wants these Marine Scouts to go away before she pops that Overlord back in. It's actually going to work out perfectly. She's going to move in just the time when Lucifron gets away. Nice job there. The patience so important for here for Scarlet. But the Ling's actually screwing on by. They're going to get the natural, and they can actually kill off a couple of uh, SCVs if Scarlet goes for it. Nope, they're going to go ahead and go straight to the main. Unfortunately, that is walled off, so that will be killed off. Yeah, bye-bye, Zergling. You served Deuces. well. And hey, first time we've actually seen a second factory produced for Lucifron. So you've been going for Biomech the first couple of games. Uh, this could be just a super strong two-base Hellion push um, into something else afterwards, but this could be indicative of just some strong mech play as we move on. Uh, with double gas, I really want it to be Blue Flame Hellion. And actually with that Rax falling down straight into a tech lab here, it could be Blue Flame Hellion, which is very strong against the style that Scarlet wants to go for. In fact, we watched a game with Stefano against Innovation in the GSL, and there was actually this type of build that happened that he just straight up killed off uh, Stefano, because we've only been having about four queens popping out for Scarlet. To hold that off, you need about six to eight queens, uh, or a nice amount of lings that get a lucky surround. So uh, if Lucifer goes for Blue Flame Hellions, expect him to actually maybe potentially get a lot of drone kills or even kill off Scarlet. And as you can see, Scarlet has done the exact same thing. Third base in six minutes, uh, double evolution chamber following up a third gas. Fourth gas is not quite on the way yet, uh, but her layer tech uh, will certainly be started pretty soon. Okay, so he's going for Blue Flame Hellion. It is imperative. 
that uh, Scarlet actually scouts this in any way, shape, or form. Unfortunately, there is a Marine in the top right corner where that Overlord is, so he can't come in and check out the, the main whatsoever. Uh, actually, yeah, behind that tree there, you see it just it's chilling, man, ready to snipe it right away. So there's no way that Scarlet will know it's going to be Blue Flame Hellion. There's only four Hellions here, which is like a standard mech play. Uh, she's going to be surprised, essentially. She has the three Queens out, hasn't created any more. Spine Colors are on the way, which is going to be helpful, but oh my gosh, these Hellions get into the main. They're already doing damage. Yeah, that's right. Uh, four workers have already been killed, and that number can continue to increase here in just a second. The uh, Hellions starting to be dealt with, though. Zerlings get a nice surround. That's a wall at the back with the spawning pool, so they are going to be forced into this little choke point and eventually die, but not before another five workers have been killed. Should have been able there to get a couple more, but once that third one was killed off, got stuck on the mineral line there. It's really hard to snipe any more off with only two Hellions, so uh, let's find just forfeited them. But the Blue Flame Hellion is about to finish up. How many do they have uh, outside of the natural here? Only six. Would be a little bit better here to get a couple more, and it looks like he's going to wait until uh, an eighth does pop in, and now he's going to push across the middle of the map here. You only saw the four queens, too, as well, so he's got a good chance to do a huge amount of damage. Yeah, especially if Scarlet uh, does a nice thing for him and finishes up these destructible rocks. Uh, but as it stands, here comes Lucifron now. The uh, the Zerglings making their way out, and I'm not sure if they saw all those Hellions, but they are a little bit out of position to be able to deal with this. That was a round of drones that was just created for Scarlet too. So now finally 12 Zerglings coming up, but not before a lot of drones are going oh to die. Oh my gosh, she is in so much trouble here. Isn't he splitting the drones pretty nicely? But look how many drone kills that are being killed off immediately here from the Hellions. Nice pinching there. 20 have been, so she does block her ramp right away. So it's play here uh, from Scarlet, and for the most part, it's going it pretty nicely, but 20 drones going down is pretty darn big. There were three Marines with Zelnago, which I would have loved to have gone into the third. Uh, Lucifer is trying to find a way to get out, but the links here will prevent that from happening. All right, so oops, a little bit of a pause here real quick as we get things uh, sorted out once again. So uh, apologize there. Looks like everyone is ready to go now, but looks like they were just trying to adjust the lights to make sure that uh, it was a little bit less bright for our competitors here, and imagine that's what had uh, interrupted things. Notice how Scarlet's holding this off, though. She's leaving two queens to constantly chase down the Hellions while the other two come back and block off the exit path. But four more Hellions make it into the third. Drones are going to be roasted. There is one lone queen here to help defend, but that will not be enough. Mine Crawler getting a couple of pokes off, but not before the drones are going to be dispatched up very quickly here. Lucifron with this build is literally just absolutely countering the build that Scarlet's been going for. And Lucifron is playing his Lucifroniest right now. He has three <laughs> more uh, factories coming up now. He's pumping out nothing but Hellions and inflicting huge amounts of economic damage, and uh, he's doing it very successfully. Plus one, plus one coming up for his mech as well. Uh, Scarlet is down to just 42 drones and has to recover very quickly. She has been doing what you need to do against this. Either, A, you get a Roach Warren and deal with it effectively, or you keep droning off and hope that your queens and lanes get the, the right surround. So she's gone for the latter option here, but more Hellions keep showing up, and that's kind of the advantage here. If you get a nice initial burst of damage with your first Hellion, you constantly keep following up because most players won't throw down a Roach Warren. And this is the point where Scarlet thinks, okay, I should have put a Roach Warren down because now the Hellions are in the main and Scarlet may just have to GG from this if she loses all her drones and she is losing a substantial amount of them. All yeah. falling here, hitting it into the 40s now with Wolfus killed. Yep, 49, as uh. a matter of fact. About to head up to 50. Uh. Lucifer from behind this is doing a magnificent job of, me of mecking. Uh, he's going up to his third base. His command center, in fact, is already done. He's producing three tanks at a time. His 1-1 upgrades are about halfway done. He's going to kill a lot more Zerglings here. Even though there was a pretty good surround, and they're going to tuck him into a little corner here, yet more units are going to die. Yeah, the goal here for uh, Lucifron, because he was already trapped in the main base, was just to kill off as many links as possible, and he certainly did that. Scott now falling up into Roaches. She has a nice economy here to get out a good f eight, ten of them, actually. Uh, so if she can get him popped out, it will be pretty nice for it. But already, the Hellions are in the natural once again, just roasting drones. And, uh, wow, Charlie is pretty far behind. If she comes back from this, man, she is a beast. Well, that's 56 workers killed. Few more get roasted off to the side. 60 workers killed to just one. And uh, you can see she's produced 96 drones over the course of this game. 60 of them have been killed. She's down to just 36. So now uh, the bulk of her mineral economy is here. And of course, the destructible rock still stands. So had there been another little attack over to the third, the units wouldn't have been able to react in time. That could have actually been pretty deadly as well, as it looks like Lucifer may be heading towards that direction now. Here's the worst part behind all of this. Lucifer moving to the third. He's got plus one, one already done from the cannon weapon moving into siege tanks. They already have siege mode. If he pushes his Hellions at a few siege tanks, it kind of sits by them and slowly pushes in, he will just straight up kill 
kill off Scarlet. And uh, more drones are being roasted once again. A huge volley goes off as well, hitting up almost into the 70 numbers here with drones being killed off, transfusing even the drones. Uh, so Scarlet will hold that small push once again. But remember, behind all this, now plus two weapons are on the way. Uh, four mechanical weapons moving into more sea chains at the same time. Production is off the chain here for Lucifer. You can tell he's bringing eight hellions at a time while it's still at the same time, still creating sea chains at home. Falling into, look at this, three command centers because he can do it. Scarlet literally can't push off across the middle of the map. Yeah, and so Scarlet's doing, the one nice thing she has going for her, of course, is her creep spread. It, it's it's uh, an effective job of getting that through the middle of the map, so if she can find an engagement out in the middle of the open, she will be able to surround those forces quite easily. But the problem is, does she even have the firepower to do that if she gets a perfect engagement? Oh, I don't know, man. Like, literally, if she wins, I will give away my tie to someone here in the venue. It's, it's this follow-up push from Lucifon is ridiculously strong, and you're starting to see it right here with the uh, Sea Shanks now on the way, just putt putting away on the hatchery. She can't get a fourth base at all. There is one on Hellion as well, making its way into the natural at the same time, just enough to make Scarlet kind of deal with both ends of the front. Sea Shanks now seeching up once again, and this third is in trouble at the same time, because there's no way these twins can engage this. Yeah, this Mike Crawler is going to die very quickly. Almost grabs itself a tank, but that's going to be about all. Queen coming forward to absorb a few shots while yet more drones are roasted inside of the third. 74 workers killed and oh increasing now. And this is just a drone slaughter. Yeah, you can make it up to 100 drones killed if you uh, kept up with the aggression. Finally, he's also going to try and break this line here. There's so many sea tanks, though, with the plus 1-1, one, one, and the queens are being dispatched up. The Roach is doing their best as well to help out, but all the queens have now been killed off here for Scarlet, and GG has been called. Lucifron will be advancing to the finals. That's right. So moving into the finals, taking out Scarlet, and finding himself, of course, with that plus 1 uh, win already in the best of 5 finals that is to come. Scarlet, of course, falling into the lower bracket, has to face off against another Terran, a rematch, actually, from uh, winner's round 1. If you remember, she goes up against Illusion. Yeah, man, I just want to say Lucifron, that build was awesome, man, because throughout the whole entire evening, he's been very bio-eccentric, and now he goes into his bread and butter for game number three. A very strong Hellion push with Blue Flame, unexpected here from Scarlet, who's been doing the same build over and over and over again, and it's just a direct counter and a great one to pull off in an ace match. Just kudos to Lucifron. All right, guys, well, we are going to run to a commercial break, and when we get back, it'll be the Loser's Bracket Finals. We'll see the second player eliminated, the second player moving on into the Grand Finals here between Illusion and Scarlet. Don't go anywhere. Yeah. 